Last evening, we broadcast footage of the entrance of Jamaica House in relation to a shooting incident that reportedly occurred at the Vale Royal property. The footage shown had no relation to the story. It was not our intention to cause any disrepute, and therefore, we apologize for any inconvenience that this may have caused. Still tonight, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade, Kamina Johnson-Smith, says the government intends to engage the University of the West Indies on whether accommodations can be made for the students who fled the war-ravaged Ukraine to continue their studies. The 24 students are currently in Krakow, Poland, and flights have been booked for their return to Jamaica. In a video update shared on Minister Johnson Smith's Twitter page last night, she said that the government would also reach out to its bilateral partners to explore opportunities. Uh, the charge is there with them. She met with them earlier. I was able to ascertain some of their most immediate needs and we were able to resource her to go and get some warm clothes and that kind of thing. You know, it's been a very trying time. Uh, we will be providing them with a small subsistence so that the personal items that it might be more appropriate for them to get themselves, uh, that they'll be able to secure those. And of course, uh, when they are flying out, if there are delays on the flight out, that they'll be able to deal with food and drink on their way out. So on the matter of flights, we've booked uh, flights through Frankfurt into Montego Bay and we've arranged transportation from Montego Bay to Kingston for those who need it. Uh, we've also liaised with the Ministry of Health to ensure that counselling will be available for those who wish it, um, not on spot, but at the time that they might feel best able to, to process and to, to have those discussions. Uh, as you know, most of them were uh, hesitant to leave because they were worried about their studies. Uh, we had engaged UA early in, th in this process. We'll re-engage them to see if there's any possibility at all of accommodation. And we'll also reach out to bilateral partners to see if they have any programs in place which will be seeking to accommodate uh, students who have been disrupted in, um, from their studies in Ukraine specifically. Uh, there are no guarantees, of course, uh, but there may well be, and we will explore them. In the meantime, Minister Johnson Smith said that the three students who had not disembarked the train with their colleagues in Lviv are safe. In respect of the three students who didn't disembark uh, in Lviv, I just wanted to update you that uh, two are safe in a location in Ukraine that their mothers have determined is appropriate for them to stay at this time. And uh, one is in Romania where we have uh, secured some support for her on that side. Uh, so she's safely accommodated as well and will make her way out in due course. Um, we just encourage you to keep praying for them, for their strength, their resilience, to give thanks for it as well. And of course, um, as Jamaicans, we will always be indomitable. We will always survive and we will always thrive. Our hearts go out to the people of Ukraine. In other news, a gardener from St. James reportedly lost his life yesterday after he fell into a pit while working. He reportedly died after falling into the pit that was covered with plyboards. Rescue workers were reportedly on the scene as early as 11.30 a.m. The gardener, with his weed whacker in hand, reportedly screamed out for help as he was falling into the pit. A neighbor said she was only able to see his head and shoulders going down. The fire department responded within 10 minutes of being called. However, it took more than five hours for a cesspool company to pull more than four loads of sewage from the pit before the man was spotted. Still tonight, two persons remain in police custody as investigations continue into the seizure of seven firearms in St. James yesterday. The two were arrested following an operation at a warehouse on Sea Grape Way, Montego Bay in the parish. It is reported that at approximately 2.30 p.m., a joint team consisting of members of the Contraband Enforcement Team and the police 
were making checks at the facility. The guns were discovered during an inspection of electronic items. Now seized are one AM-15 assault rifle, one R armory multi-caliber assault rifle, one Ruger PC charger, one Canic TP-95F handgun, one Ruger SR-9C handgun, and two Taurus G2C handguns. Investigations are ongoing, and we will bring you more on this story in subsequent newscasts. Still making Mellow TV news, 29-year-old Garfield Shea, otherwise called G, a construction worker of Aerial Sea Pathway Seaview Gardens in Kingston 11, has been charged in connection with the seizure of a Smith & Wesson Springfield pistol and 10.45 rounds of ammunition during an operation in his community yesterday. Reports from the Hunts Bay Police coming into our news center tonight are that at approximately 11.50 p.m., law enforcement officers were in the area when they observed Shea sitting on a stool. He was accosted, searched, and the illegal firearm was found in his possession. Shea was subsequently arrested and charged with illegal possession of firearm and ammunition. His court date is being finalized. Continuing with the news tonight, detectives assigned to the Portland Police Division have listed two men as persons of interest in a recent murder and wounding with intent that took place on Orette Lane in Buff Bay, Portland on February 23. They are Roger Chamberlain, otherwise called Mad Sus of Crooked River Anata Bay in St. Mary, and a man known only as O'Shane, otherwise called Q of Olympic Way, Kingston 11. Both men are being urged to immediately turn themselves into the police. Meanwhile, anyone knowing their whereabouts is being asked to contact the Buff Bay Police at 876-809-1219, 876-996-1497, Police Emergency 119, Crime Stop at 311 or the nearest police station. And we turn our attention now to tonight's COVID-19 update where the Ministry of Health and Wellness reported 67 new COVID-19 cases and one death yesterday, increasing the infection total now to 128,053 and total deaths to 2,814. 283 recoveries were also reported in the last 24 hours, increasing that total to 76,987. Meanwhile, the new cases comprise 35 females and 32 males ranging in age from 1 to 94 years. In tonight's COVID-19 parish breakdown, St. James recorded 14 cases, St. Anne recorded 12 cases, Clarendon 10 cases, Westmoreland recorded 7 cases. Kingston and St. Andrew, Hanover and St. Catherine recorded five cases each. St. Mary and St. Elizabeth recorded three cases each. Trelawney recorded two cases, while Manchester recorded one case. Now the deceased is a 100-year-old male from St. Elizabeth who died in February of this year. Continuing with the news, the Department of Correctional Services, DCS, has announced that effective today, it resumed non-contact visits within the juvenile institutions. According to a release, the phased resumption follows the advice from the organization's medical team based upon a significant decrease in positive cases within the institutions following the fourth wave of COVID-19. Visitation at juvenile centers is phase one of the resumption. In 2020, the DCS discontinued visits in correctional institutions to prevent the introduction of the COVID-19 virus within the centers. To date, 
the DCS has recorded 1,111 positive cases, 13 deaths, and 1,109 recoveries within the correctional centers. It shared that despite the reduction of cases, the organization will continue to maintain strict adherence to all COVID-19 protocols. And those are the stories making news. We will now go to a break and then join Christopher Scott with the latest in sports. Hi, I'm Chris Tufton, Minister of Health and Wellness. Vaccination has always been a critical part of protecting the health of our Jamaican people. The more of us who get vaccinated, the greater our chances of slowing the spread of COVID-19. The COVID-19 vaccine now available to Jamaica has met all the required safety and quality standards. I will take the vaccine. So let's vaccinate to stay safe. Message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Thank you so much, Shelly Ann. We kick off Melo TV Sports with football as Jamaica's under-20 reggae girls yesterday rebounded from their opening game loss to Blanc Cuba 3-0 at the CONCACAF Women's Under-20 Championship in the Dominican Republic. Cameron Simmons scored a double in the 34th and 49th minutes with a substitute Christina Salmon adding the third in the 81st as Jamaica won their first game in Group H. Jamaica lost the opening game to Guatemala on the weekend and must now avoid losing to Haiti tomorrow to secure one of three spots from the group to advance. Meanwhile, both Haiti and Guatemala have punched their ticket to the knockout round after a 1-1 draw yesterday. The two finalists and third place finishers in the CONCACAF championship will join host nation Costa Rica as CONCACAF representatives at the World Cup scheduled for August 10 to 28. Title holders Cavalier yesterday condemned Montego Bay United to a 3-0 beating in the Jamaica Premier League. Dwayne Atkinson, Kenroy Campbell and Ronaldo Webster scored to see Cavalier move up to fifth in the standings on 12 points. The loss now condemns Montego Bay United to the bottom of the 12-team table on goal difference with four points. In the days of the games, Arnett Gardens clipped Dumbe holding to one. Substitutes Luca Kong and Damari Deacon scored for Arnett as they moved from fourth to third on the standings. On to cricket news now, South Africa today turned the tables on New Zealand with an emphatic 198-run win in the second test in Christchurch, crushing the hosts' hopes of a maiden series win over the Proteas. Having suffered their second worst test defeat in the first meeting in Christchurch, South Africa rebounded superbly at Hagley Oval, dismissing the Black Caps for 227 in their second innings just after tea on day five. Chasing a would-be world record victory target of 426 runs, New Zealand resumed on 94 for four in the morning and there was a flicker of hope of saving the match as they reached lunch at 180 for five. The resistance was however broken when wicket keeper Tom Blundell 44 and all-rounder Colin de Grand Home 18 fell after the break with the Black Caps losing six for 61 runs to see the two test series finish 1-1. South Africa's pace spearhead Kagisa Rabada was man of the match after taking eight wickets and blasting 47 runs in the second innings where the tourists declared on 354 for nine to set up the win. Rabada's pace comrade Marco Janssen grabbed three final day wickets to finish with seven for the match while spinner Keshav Maharaj was influential with three for 75 in the second innings. Final score South Africa 300 
264 and 354 for 9 declared. New Zealand 293 and 227. South Africa maintained their unbeaten series record over New Zealand and became the first team to win a match at the Hagley Oval after choosing to bat first. Finally, in the sports news tonight, Ja Moran scored a franchise-high 52 points, breaking the record he set two days ago to lead the Memphis Grizzlies to victory over the San Antonio Spurs in the NBA last night. Point guard Moran landed 22 of 30 field goal attempts, setting another Grizzlies record in the 118-105 win. The Grizzlies' win stopped veteran Spurs coach Greg Popovich, tying Don Nelson's NBA record for regular season coaching victories of 1,335. Elsewhere on the night, Giannis Antetokounmpo recorded his fifth consecutive double-double as the Milwaukee Bucks defeated the visiting Charlotte Hornets 130-106 to end a two-game losing streak. The two-time Most Valuable Player returned 26, board, 26 points, grabbed 16 boards, and dished out six assists along with four blocks, landing all 14 of his efforts from the free throw line. Rookie Scotty Barnes tied a career high of 28 points as the Toronto Raptors won 133-97 to against the Brooklyn Nets in New York. Other games saw the Cleveland Cavaliers fall 122-127 to Minnesota Timberwolves. The Orlando Magic were 119-103 winners over the Indiana Pacers, while the Miami Heat burnt the Chicago Bulls 112-99. And those are the stories making sports news tonight. I'm Christopher Scott. Remember, do stay safe and pleasant viewing. Hello TV, everywhere.